This is my list of my favorite 21 science fiction horror movies. I could have knocked one off the list to make it an even 20, but there are exactly 21 science fiction horror movies that I really like. Number 21 is the sequel to The Fly, which probably doesn't make a whole lot of lists. I realize that it is not a good movie, but science fiction horror is slim pickings. There's not that many sci-fi horror movies, and certainly not the kind of sci-fi horror movies that I really like, which is monster slash alien with body horror. That's my flavor. There's really not a whole lot of it. So The Fly 2 hits those buttons, and it manages to kind of weakly hit them. It has some really memorable, disgusting special effects. Some really, really good special effects, some monster prosthetics, some practical effects. And it's an okay plot. Some of the special effects definitely don't hold up. The characters are not memorable, but the ending definitely is memorable. And there's a couple of scares slash gross out moments from this movie that honestly are pretty good. So bottom of the heap, number 21. Number 20 is Alien Resurrection. This movie gets a lot of shit and sure, it probably doesn't age that well, but honestly, to spoil some of the rest of the list, I like it more than Alien 3. I definitely like it more than Prometheus and definitely, definitely, definitely like it more than, uh, I hate the movie so much I can't even remember it. The, the, the latest Alien, the one with the two Davids. Alien Resurrection, it's just, it's got like this goofy 90s weirdness. It's really madcap. If you take it on its own merits, if you don't compare it to the other Alien movies in the franchise, in the original quadrilogy. It's kind of charming and it's kind of a fun movie. Winona Ryder's in it and she's decent. Sigourney Weaver's in it, she's okay. There is a couple of creepy things in the movie. I remember the visual of Ripley falling into all the entrails laid out in front of the alien queen. That was like a great visual. The weird fleshy half alien baby creature at the end, I think is creepy, still kind of gives me the willies. And there's a couple of I, I, the action scenes where the chest burster is coming through the guy's head and it's all, you know, pulse pounding techno music. I, I, I'm kind of a sucker for movies from that era and it definitely still charms me. Number 19 is Sputnik, which is, I think, the most recent movie on this list. It's a movie about cosmonauts that come back to Earth and one of them is carrying an alien that he brought back with him from his journey in the space. And I can't say that much more about it without spoiling it. Uh, they bring in a female psychologist to try to help debrief him from the mission. And it devolves into a pretty okay science fiction horror movie. Number 18 is Life. I think this, yeah, Jake Gyllenhaal and I think Ryan Reynolds, I could be wrong on that. It's okay. It's a movie about people in space and there's an alien parasite that infects one of them and I remember like two scenes from the movie. I saw it in the theater when it came out. It's science fiction. It's body horror. There's aliens in it. It's okay. I don't remember hating it. So number 18. Number 17 might piss some people off, especially in light of the fact that Alien 3 is not on this list. It's the remake of The Thing, the 2011 remake slash reboot of the John Carpenter The Thing. I, this movie gets a lot of shit and deservedly so on some level. Famously, they decided, the studio decided at the last minute to roll back all of the practical effects that they had built for the movie, all the animatronics and the practical effects, which is one of the main endearing points of the original, the original movie in place of kind of bad CGI. And I, I not only don't like CGI in movies, I hate CGI in movies. Ever since I was a kid, I've hated CGI in movies. I've always thought it was tawdry. I've kind of gotten used to it a little, but my eye still hasn't. And even the best CGI effects, I can still tell that it's happening, and I'm still, on some level, there's a little, a little 12 year old snob in me that's insulted every time I see CGI movies. So I, I fully resonate with that criticism of the movie. Also, all the characters are flat. None of them are particularly well written. They do away with a lot of the subtleties of the original movie. They rework the character of the thing 
meaning like the personality of the thing. So it's really blatant. It's right out in the open. It's way more of a monster movie than the original. Um, all of that being taken into account, it's still a watered down derivative of one of the finest science fiction horror movies ever made. So even this denigrated form of the thing is still better than the majority of horror movies that I see. Yes, in comparison to the John Carpenter movie, it's a piece of shit. But in comparison to many, many, many other horror movies and sci-fi horror movies, it's still better, it's still more watchable. I've probably seen it five times. Next is Event Horizon. Famously, this movie is not well liked, not that well respected, and I concur. It's Hellraiser in space. Just to piss the rest of you off that aren't already pissed off by this list, I think the Hellraiser movies kind of suck. There are a few points in the Hellraiser movies that I think are kind of cool. Hellraiser in space, I like more than the original Hell Hellraiser. And this, the, um, the production design for Event Horizon I think is great. All the sets, the weird gothic architecture, and some of the gore effects are really good. There's that one scene where the guy is trapped outside the airlock and he's trying, he gets rescued by um, Lawrence Fishburne. That scene is great. There's a couple other scenes like where they're, they're watching the, the video recorded from the original Event Horizon where they're all eating each other and stuff. That scene freaked me out when I was a teenager. I still find it creepy and the the very end, all the flashes of all the crew members trapped in hell still gives me the willies a little bit. The rest of the movie kind of blows, but it's, it's okay. Next is Altered States, which gets classed as a science fiction horror movie, and I class it as such too, obviously because it's on this list. It barely qualifies, I think. It's more of a science fiction drama with some horror elements in it. It's more of a mood piece, but it's such a good movie and such an underrated movie that I felt compelled to include it on this list. Really solid performances, really interesting script. Um, there are a couple of scenes, one scene in particular, this long lingering psychedelic sequence of the main character and his love interest slowly disintegrating in this windstorm while they're holding hands is just one of the most memorable things that I've ever seen in a movie. And the, the special effects don't really hold up all that well, but I just really like it. I really, really like the movie. And I only saw it one time, but it still sticks with me as something that's, that actually pulls off being resonant and impactful and meaningful and also science fiction and also a little bit of horror. Number 14 is From Beyond, which is this cornball B-movie from the 80s. Very Lovecraftian. I don't remember if it's actually based on a Lovecraft story. I think it might be. It's about a guy that builds a machine that, that disintegrates the boundary between this dimension and an overlapping alternative dimension that's full of monsters. And the scientist gets sucked into that world and transformed into this big, disgusting, fleshy, slimy thing. And it's a weird, wild movie with some BDSM imagery and themes shoehorned in for some reason. And it's a bad movie, but it has Jeffrey Combs or Coombs. Never been clear on what the correct pronunciation is in it. And he's great. And I just realized that I left Reanimator off this list. Whatever, throw it in there somewhere. It's pretty good. Um, from Beyond, I like better than Reanimator just because I think some of the visuals are really effective and the, the color palette is really memorable. And the everything around the special effects sucks, but the special effects are great. The actual horror scenes of the, the scientist monster eating people are great. Next is Slither, which is a movie that I think people hate. And I don't understand why, because it was directed by James Gunn and the things about the movie that annoy me, I think should be selling points, should make it a more popular movie now. It's, it fits in with the, the sensibility that people have now. The, the stuff that annoys me is, it, it's like very Joss Whedon-y. It's very kind of, kind of quippy, epic, oh, well that just happened, that kind of shit. There's a lot of that in there. It's a sci-fi horror comedy. And about half of the comedy is really irritating and the other half is actually okay, actually works as comedy. And the horror parts of it are really good, really, really good. It 
hits that sci-fi body horror button right dead center and it hits it hard. There are special effects in the movie that are derivative of other sci-fi movies that are higher up on this list, but it's pulled off really well. The special effects hold up and they're disgusting. There is a couple of scenes that I think the scene with the lady in the barn who's inflated to a hundred times her size is stupid. The rest of the body horror special effects work really well and there's a couple pieces of the movie that are absolutely disgusting. Next is Cube. We're kind of getting into the territory where it's not mostly criticism or half and half criticism and praise for these movies. Cube I saw when I was a teenager and I've I loved it then. I've probably seen it 20 times. I rewatched it recently and I love it. I still love it. There's some bad acting in it but it's a really compelling sci-fi thriller slash horror about these people that basically get trapped in this gigantic Rubik's Cube. So the movie is about this collection of people who are seemingly arbitrarily thrown together, stripped of all their personal belongings, put in jumpsuits, and they are anesthetized and then wake up in this really austere cubicle room. And they find that as they open, there, there are like hatches that open on the face of all six, the, the ceiling floor and all four walls have hat, hatch doors that open up onto identical cubicle rooms. And some of the rooms are booby trapped and some aren't. So they die off one after the other in gruesome ways as they try to solve the puzzle of how to escape this gigantic Rubik's Cube that they're trapped in and trying to figure out why they're there there's some political overtones that are a little bit ham-fisted, but are, you know, are still effective. It's an interesting character study and the performances are really uneven, but it just, it's a great little low budget indie horror movie that has stood the test of time. People still talk about this movie. The next one is actually one of my favorites. I can't put it higher on the list just because the quality isn't really there, but it's Society, which is a mostly forgotten horror movie about, um, I can't say what it's about without spoiling it. I don't even remember the plot that well. I just remember the final concluding scene. The first seven eighths of the movie are this kind of so bad it's good period horror, character driven horror mystery. And then the very last slice of the movie is this extended sequence that is, I don't want to say too much about it with that because it'll spoil it. And I'm sure you've probably never seen this movie because most people haven't, but it's this orgy of practical sci-fi body horror effects that lasts for like 10 minutes. And it's disgusting and really disturbing. And it, it's, delivered with this kind of comedic twist, which is, I think, what uh, Slither was aping off of. Society is the main inspiration, at least visually, for Slither, and it has that same tone of kind of sci-fi horror comedy, but the comedy is downplayed a little bit, at least in this part of the movie. Uh, I'll probably will never watch this movie again because that scene unsettled me so deeply that uh, I, I can remember most of it and I have no motivation to watch it again because it's it's just so, it makes me so queasy or it made me so queasy when I watched it. And there's this part of that scene where this pizza boy gets killed that is like the most, it's not even the goriest death. And some of you might, who have seen the movie might laugh at me for saying this, but I, I think it's like the one death in any horror movie that disturbed me the most deeply. And uh, it's it's like this great kind of uh, leftist allegory. It, it's it's a lot of social commentary. That sounds really dreary, but it's really good. It, it's actually like pretty clever and smart the way that it's delivered. Next is The Mist, which is a 2007 movie adaptation of a Stephen King story. It's the only Stephen King movie adaptation I've seen that I really liked. And it's the typical small town Stephen King setting. There's a dad and his kid who wind up trapped in a grocery store, the local small town grocery store, as this supernatural mist comes rolling in over the countryside. 
and the mist contains all kinds of creepy crawly aliens or monsters. They don't know exactly what's happening or what they are, but the townspeople get picked off one by one, and then there's this religious hysteria subplot that honestly I could do without. It has, speaking of uncomfortable endings, it has the bleakest ending of any movie that I've ever seen. The most depressing, the most hopeless, the darkest ending that just comes out of nowhere seemingly and credits roll and you want to cry. Next is the 1988 remake of The Blob, the famous B-movie from the 50s. The Blob is self-aware of its origins. It doesn't take itself terribly seriously, and it plays with all of these tropes of horror movies, especially B-movie horror tropes from the period. And there are these stock characters. It contorts those tropes and those expectations into something that's unique and surprising. And the movie is always kind of heading you off at the pass a little bit and showing you something that you weren't quite expecting. And the, the gore effects are like superb. Again, there are scenes from the movie that are so gross that I can mentally picture them perfect, like with perfect lucid clarity. I can see people melting in really specific, vivid ways. It's just really, really good. It's uh, a movie that nobody really watches anymore. It got a... I got a review from the Red Letter Media guys, and I think that turned more people onto it, but it's totally worth a watch. It's so, so, so much better than you would anticipate. A remake of The Blob being. Number seven is The Platform, another recent movie. I think this was a Spanish language movie, and it's like Cube in most ways, but way scarier and better written with better acting. It's about this near future prison where people are trapped in these small rooms in this vertical tower and there's a hole, this big square hole in the middle of each room through which this levitating platform descends. And I think there's 200 levels to this prison and at the top level they load this platform up with a mountain of gourmet food prepared by four-star chefs and as the platform descends, it stops for, I think, 60 seconds at each level. And the prisoners on those levels are free to take and eat as much food as they can eat without saving any food for later uh, because they'll be punished. So as the platform descends lower and lower through the prison, people get more and more desperate to sca uh, scavenge scraps of food. And as it goes lower and lower and lower into the lowest levels, uh, there is no food. People resort to cannibalism. I think it's technically a thriller. It caused me to feel quite a bit of horror. And the, the, the ending is like a little bit of a letdown, but everything leading up to the last little bit of the movie is so effective. Okay, platform is number eight, sorry. Number seven is 28 Days Later, which I'm counting as a science fiction horror because the origin of the zombies is a virus. It's the only zombie movie that I really buy. There's that one, the one zombie, I don't remember what it's called, but it has, uh, what's his face? The guy who played Tim in the British version of The Office. There's one other zombie movie that I like. It's like a movie about parenthood that happens to have zombies in it. That one's good too, but 28 Days Later, it does this thing where there will be a jump scare in the middle of just a completely, like a scene that has not been building up to a jump scare at all. There are completely unearned jump scares. Zombies just break through a window in the middle of a piece of dialogue and it just scared the shit out of me. I think still the best zombie movie ever made. Number six is Aliens. Aliens used to be like number two or number three for me. And I will say this, every time I watch Alien, I like it more. Every time I watch Aliens, I like it just a little bit less. And we're starting way, way high. We're starting at a point of this is one of my favorite movies that I've ever seen and slowly diminishing as I creep closer and closer to middle age. And I haven't quite passed Aliens, it's number six, but eventually I think I'm gonna be tired of this movie. And it of course is a great action movie, 
It's a great science fiction movie. It's a great horror movie. But I think there is just no comparison with the original. I'm at the point now where there's just like zero room for ambivalence as to whether Alien or Aliens is the superior movie. Without getting into like a video essay about Alien, I think Aliens undoes a lot of the thematic heavy lifting that makes Alien such an interesting and special and effective movie. It reverses a lot of the uncomfortable philosophical positions that Alien takes and makes it into this much more mainstream, family-friendly, feel-good type like blockbuster movie. And I know that I just called Aliens a feel-good movie, but it really is. I don't resonate with it as much. It doesn't pack nearly the same punch for me as the movies higher on the list. And it certainly doesn't pack the punch that Alien does. Also, the visual effects are not aging gracefully. There is some blue screen stuff or green screen stuff that just uh, looks bad at this point. I can't talk about Aliens without sounding like I'm just excoriating it and, and implying that it's a bad movie. It isn't. It's one of the best Hollywood blockbusters ever made. James Cameron had this maniacal eye for detail during the production of Aliens. He was an absolute taskmaster. Everything in the movie is thought through carefully. It all works together. The characters are kind of broadly drawn, but really effective. The plot moves along at this great pace. The effects are, are really good. Um, builds tension really effectively and holds it and then releases it at the right time. Um, the, the action sequences are genuinely exciting and there is a payoff at the end. It's big explosive ending. Above Aliens is The Terminator, another James Cameron movie, and one that is kind of a little bit of a misfit on this list because most people don't think of it as a horror movie. But if you go back and rewatch Terminator 1, it is a horror movie. It's structured just like a monster movie. The Terminator is a monster that happens to be a cyborg from the future. And I think it's wonderful. I did put it above Aliens, and I can't really justify why. I remain a little bit more impressed by Terminator than by Aliens, especially because it, it came so early in James Cameron's career. And because it's just such a tight little, low budget, effective, streamlined movie. And it's impossible to watch it without comparing it, especially to Terminator 2. I think they're really different animals. And Terminator 1 is not as good as Terminator 2, but Terminator 2 is not at all a horror movie. Everything about the movie just hangs together so beautifully, and it's such a pleasurable, easy watch for such an old, relatively old movie. It just holds up so well. So number four is Tremors, which also kind of doesn't quite belong on this list, but I included it really, frankly, just because I wanted to, because I love the movie so much. In terms of comedy horror, I don't think Tremors has been surpassed. It's like a low budget horror movie about a town, a really, really small town out in the desert that is besieged by subterranean, gigantic, carnivorous worms that have tentacles that come out of their mouths that key in on vibrations on the ground and pop out and eat people. And it's wonderful. The practical effects are superb still hold up really well. The characters are not terribly sophisticated, but just great. I remember every single character, and maybe it's because I've seen the movie like 40 times in my life, but I still can, can remember all the defining characteristics of each of the main uh, cast members. The Burt Gummer character is just timeless. There are scenes in the movie that still make me laugh when I watch it and it's genuinely pretty scary. It just is one of those movies that I never get tired of watching. Number three is The Fly, the Jeff Goldblum version of The Fly. This is a David Cronenberg remake of a B-movie from the 50s. Arguably, there are other David Cronenberg movies that could belong on this list, but The Fly is the one Cronenberg movie that is true science fiction horror. The Fly is one of those movies where I haven't seen it that much because every time I think about watching it, I just, like, there's this part of me that recoils from the prospect of, of watching it because it's so disturbing and it's so gross. 
and it's so sad. I, it's a, a sci-fi horror romance drama tragedy. It's an interesting movie because there are all of these extreme body horror moments that are played both for horror and also for sympathy. It's a tragic love story about a man who develops teleportation machines and teleports himself from one machine to the other, not knowing that he's in the pod in uh, the machine with a housefly and his genetics get scrambled up with the genetics of the housefly during the teleportation process. So the movie follows him as his body transforms into this insectoid creature. I saw this movie on TV secretly when I was a little kid. It was playing on TNT on TV and I was watching it when my parents weren't in the room. And even the censored television version was so disgusting and shocking to me as a kid that I, th I think that's like why the movie is still so disturbing to me because I imprinted on the movie as like, I, it, it didn't seem, it, I would never have guessed that a movie could be that horrific as a kid before I just happened to turn, turn a channel 27 or whatever it was. I think it actually was channel 27. Um, I was totally transfixed by it. And it wasn't until much later that I actually sat down and watched the uncensored version. And it was just as disturbing and weird and gross to me when I saw it then. And then I watched it again, I think in my late 20s. And I kind of the, the romance subplot and the, the human element of the story caught up with me. And that's what I carry with me. That's what I, how I think about the movie now is as a romance that happens to be also this super effective sci-fi body horror movie. I think this is Jeff Goldblum's best movie. Gina Davis is great in it. There's arguably only one kind of weak performance, which is Davis's boss. It's such a unique movie and it's, I think like the most serious, other than maybe Alien, like Alien and the, and Alien and the Fly, I think of as the two like really, really serious with a capital S sci-fi horror movies. So number two, I, I, you know, like <laughs> it's gonna be one of two movies, you know, and it's The Thing. It is The Thing, the John Carpenter remake of The Thing from Outer Space. I don't know that I can say anything about The Thing that hasn't been said a million times already. I will just agree with everything that people have said. It's a movie about an Antarctic research station that is besieged by a shape-shifting alien. The practical effects, for the most part, are bar none the best in any horror movie that I've seen. So I know that I've used the word gross many times in this video. The thing is the grossest, except maybe society. The effects are as good as people say they are. Some of them haven't aged all that well, but they're just such technical marvels that they're never not gonna be enjoyable to watch. And Rob Bottin, the head of special effects, was only 21 or 22 when he did this movie, which is astonishing. I've seen this movie, what, like 30 plus times at least. I still watch it at least once a year. I will never, ever, ever get tired of watching the movie. If you have not seen it, I think watching the thing for the first time, especially if you haven't seen the clips of the special effects, if the, the gore moments are going to be a surprise to you, as they were to me, because I saw it again as a teenager before it blew up as this like huge cult mega classic, and you saw clips of it everywhere, uh, pre-YouTube. I saw it when I was like 16 or something. I won't spoil it, but the first thing reveal, the monster reveal, I did not see coming at all. I didn't know what to expect. And I don't think I've ever been so floored by anything in a movie. It wasn't even like just horror. It wasn't even just disgust. It was like pure shock. I could not believe what I was seeing. And it's this firework of a special effects sequence that just gets crazier and crazier and crazier. The, the Thing is a 10 out of 10 movie, which leaves number one, obviously, I think you can all guess, Ghosts of Mars by John Carpenter. So it's Alien. Alien is the number one. Alien is the best sci-fi horror movie ever made. Alien is the best science fiction movie ever made. Alien is the best horror movie ever made. Alien, arguably, is the best movie ever made. And I am biased because I love sci-fi. I love sci-fi horror. So of course, my tastes push me in this direction. Whatever big 800 pound gorilla movie you want to put up against Alien, I really 
have never seen one that I can make a case is superior to Alien. Alien is, I want to say, truly perfect, like truly flawless. There is one flaw, one criticism that I have, which I will get to. So the reason why Alien is so great is not just that the acting is perfect, the casting is perfect, the production design is perfect, the special effects are groundbreaking and still hold up for the most part. Almost every frame of the movie looks beautiful still. All, all of those things being true, the fact that there are these like incredible scare moments. There is a jump scare that is probably like the most well-earned jump scare of any horror movie that I've seen. Uh, I, I've never been more frightened by a movie than I was by Alien when I saw it for the first time. Even being familiar with all the tropes, knowing kind of what was coming, I was like beside myself when I was watching it. I was like, again, I was like 15, 16 and barely held it together. This already puts it in a league of its own. The level of thematic sophistication in that movie is unmatched. It is truly peerless. There is an entire body of real scholarship of like critical theory papers that have been written about Alien. There's so much to unpack in this movie. It, it never, ever, ever fully reveals itself. It's like this uh, archaeological dig that never ends. You just keep brushing dust off of these these obscure, weird little parts of, of Alien that you hadn't noticed before. And the more you watch it, the more you study it, the more you learn about it, the better it gets. It's able to spin all of these plates at once and have it be totally internally consistent and logical and it all hangs together and coheres into this almost completely perfect, dense, little Latrushka stacking doll of incredibly profound and sophisticated themes delivered in this deft, subtle, artful way. There's no other movie that generates horror in the way that Alien generates it, which is, it's not just that we're under attack, it's not just that our lives are at stake, it's that on an individual level and on a species level, we're also humiliated. We're also violated in every possible way. Famously, Alien plays upon male sexual insecurities, so it's a lot of imagery of oral uh, rape and um, all this phallic imagery, impregnation, childbirth. There is another layer above that. I think the main point of the movie, and I, I didn't kind of reach this conclusion until the last time that I, I watched it, I noticed that there was this theme at play that I hadn't noticed before, which is, it's a, a cynical refutation of kind of futurism, technological optimism, technological triumphalism, where the, the crew of the Nostromo wake up and they appear momentarily to be masters of the universe. They're awakening in this sterile white room. They're taken care of by mother. Uh, it seems that they are in control and then very quickly they're thwarted first by the alien planet that they land on all their instruments fail they descend into kind of interpersonal chaos they cease to function as a team they cease to communicate effectively they're all at odds and then the alien comes into the picture and just obliterates them like people have called it a haunted house movie in space and I think like you can go one layer deeper and say that it's it's almost like um, it's almost like a caveman movie. So they're going through these dark caves and tunnels, trying to battle this creature in pitch blackness, and it's, it might as well be a lion on the Serengeti. And I think that's really the point of the movie. That's one of the reasons why it's so effective. That's one of the reasons why it's still so effective, and one of the reasons why. It, is going to continue to be so effective on a thematic level is that it's just it's it's humanity meeting a hard stop on its pursuit of progress uh, we go out into space and we find out that not only are we not masters of the universe we're not masters of ourselves uh, we're masters of nothing our only real purpose is to be fodder for stronger 
uh, stronger species that aren't even intelligent, that just on a biological level are superior entirely to us, are stronger than us, that we are inherently just a weak animal. And that's my one criticism of Alien, which is that Ripley survives at the end. And I'm not just pulling this out of my ass. The original script had Ripley dying at the end. It was supposed to be a completely pessimistic movie. It was supposed to make that statement totally. And I think in light of that fact, the ending actually is fairly cheap. And when you watch it, you can kind of tell that it's a studio mandate that that be changed. In fact, they apparently threatened to fire Ridley Scott because he was so recalcitrant about the ending and he was sticking to his guns and they had to hold a sword over his head to get him to change the ending. And I know that that's heretical to Alien fans, but I would be perfectly willing to sacrifice the entire rest of my beloved Alien franchise to have Alien be intact as this perfectly bleak, perfectly pessimistic message. If you have recommendations for other sci-fi horror movies, I'm open to it. Please don't recommend The Void. And if it's not on this list, it's probably because I did not feel that it belonged on the list. But if I happen to have missed something, I am endlessly thirsty for more sci-fi horror movies to watch. So if you've got something in your back pocket that you think I might like, then I'm, I'm open to it. And uh, I'll see you in the comments.